I and four of my colleagues, we run this small lab, maybe one fourth the size of this room, and we call it the Creative Learning Initiative, where we make, break, tinker around, and mostly have fun. What else could one ask for? And the purpose of why we do all of this is to bring back the gleam in the eyes of our children, to make our content so interesting that they can be excited about classrooms. They would be excited to go back to school. You know, when I was a kid, I used to hate all the days of the week and Sunday would be the best day of my week. And after having worked with 10,000 teachers, 50,000 children, and asking this question, what is the best day of the week? The answers are unanimous. Teachers don't like uninterested children and children don't want to go to school. And this is not something new. Everybody who's sitting here has been, has been all through. It doesn't have to be like that. But there are reasons that it is. We are spending way too much time in the classrooms, not learning anything, and we are not even having fun. Let me ask you this simple question. How many of you have had khichdi in your life? Please, almost the whole house is full. Everybody has had khichdi. So for those who don't know what it is, it's a gruely mixture of carbohydrates, mostly boiled rice and lentils and a little bit of uh, salt on top. And so imagine we are going to do this thought experiment. We will eat khichdi for three days starting tomorrow. So morning when you get up, the breakfast is khichdi. Lunch, khichdi. Dinner, khichdi. Next day, and nothing in between. If, if you're wondering, I can have my snack, and you have had Daryl's talk today anyway, so you know you can do all of that. Um, so <laughs> the next day, breakfast is khichdi, and uh, Daryl, the lunch is khichdi, and dinner is khichdi too. The third day, same thing. Fourth day, at the sight of khichdi, all the... <laughs> Everything wants to come out, but this is exactly what we are doing to our children. 20,000 hours of khichdi of curriculum in their whole lives. Eight hours a day. So for those who do math, for those who can do simple multiplication, eight hours a day, I didn't make this up. 200 days in a year and 12 years in a row. And I'm not adding the number of hours that we force our kids to go to tuition classes and coaching classes and so on. So maybe it will double. All these 20,000 hours of khichdi is making our children malnourished learning wise. And I'll show you this. Let's do another uh, game. Uh, I like to do that. As I said, I'm a storyteller and a maker by heart. And all this goes to uh, my mentor, Arvind Gupta, who I had a chance of meeting and he inspired. He inspired, he's an inspiring man, of course, he inspired me and that's how I chose to not make chips anymore and I do this for the living, Who, what else could one ask for? So let's play this game. Everybody who's here is going to buy iron for me, all right? So that's simple. So there are two shops selling iron. This first one sells at 100 rupees a liter. And the second one sells it at 100 rupees a kg. Right? And everybody has to buy. So you have to raise your hands. So please show me by raise of, uh, raising your hands. How many of you are buying? <laughs> I don't want to buy khichdi. How many of you are buying iron at 100 rupees a kg? Looks like pretty much most of the room. How many of you are buying 100 rupees a liter? Three of them here. And so it looks like most of us want to buy iron by the kg. Because we think, well, it's solid and you can't buy solid in liters, right? And for it to be liter, you must melt it and iron, melted iron is really hot and it will be hard to carry. And so, and for some of us, we might want to think that if we buy um, uh, solid, it has to be by the kg. Well, you'll be wondering, I have this bottle, one liter bottle, empty bottle of water, which I have filled with iron, iron nails. This is one liter of iron and you can very well imagine that if I weigh this thing, it's about 8 kgs. <laughs> instead, instead all of us bought 1 kg of iron. 
for the same price as 8 kgs that is because and despite the fact that we learned about density in grade 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and so on until 16 and 18 but it never went inside we never imbibed it it remained in the intellect it never became part of us and that's because we are not doing enough in our classrooms I think all these 20,000 hours of curriculum as I said is leaving our children malnourished we need balanced diets any balanced diet needs micronutrients vitamins minerals and that is what we need to do in our classrooms that is what we need to change in our classrooms we need to do projects we need to do things we need to make break explore and we'll see how that changes our whole classrooms and if we were to ask in fact if I continue on that uh, our, our children don't know how to buy iron well all of us are adults here we bought it by the kg but if we had to buy oil we would buy it by the liter and in both cases we would get less and that's the state that's the state of education that we have that's the state that numbers might boast of you know rising literacy and gross en enrollment ratios are um, you know exceeding and going up but we are not learning much and and so we need to make sure we are doing things in our classes and I'll show you a few things that we can do this is a great toy and a device a scientific device if I were to say a piece of rubber in the middle and you can cut your own old slipper or a chapel um, and then two straws which are joined at the end right and what I do is I'll put this in this bottle of water half cut bottle of water and I'll blow <laughs> notice there is nothing here I'll turn it upside down and I'll blow again I was asked not to do it this side see if I were doing this in school everybody would say eh, mere upar karo, mere upar karo. <laughs> and look we are all adults here we don't <laughs> no no we have had rains in Goa today anyways uh, so if I blow from here and if I blow from the other side and this is something my son uh, who homeschooled for a while device he said why don't you put a stick inside dip it in water and then spin <laughs> so this small device works three different ways it's a flute it's a spray it's a sprinkler imagine our five-year-olds coming to school and watering the plants in the morning with this centrifugal forces will automatically go inside they will be part of us we will not have to mug them up same device could be used by our 16 year olds to figure out what should be the angle let's have a competition in the class how far does the water go when we spin the angle at which I can throw the water the farthest the things are enormous it might look simple but when you make it it becomes part of you every child has this thing these days it's called the fidget spinner most of you would have bought it for your children and what, are, what, what we have done is we have placed three magnets behind this spinner and these copper coils which we have made by turning the water maybe uh, uh, copper uh, around thousand times and then rub the end put the LED in and when I spin I need it in the dark here maybe and now I'm spinning electricity the energy that I use I ate whatever I ate in the morning that energy is getting converted through my hands it is the energy is not coming from the coil or from the magnet they are not connected it's the food that I ate that is getting connected to converted to energy if you were to write that in your exams today you get a zero <laughs> they, <laughs> they want you to write Faraday's law and they want you to write electromagnetic induction not the food actually this is solar generator the energy is coming from the Sun this is something that we make last um, just a few weeks back you see this as a T E and a D and when we do these workshops what we do is we provide our teachers and uh, students with this small cucumber or a carrot or a lauki um, uh, ridge gourd or something like that which you can easily scrape and then we we'll say can you make a device or an object which looks 
which looks like a square which also looks like a triangle and which also looks like a T and then our teachers are so excited and teachers are so excited cutting chopping the cucumber with the scissor with the uh, uh, paper paper cutter and out comes the device and the same thing we used to de devise this uh, this this object which we called the the tag for this instance this one fits exactly in the square it fits in the triangle it fits in the triangle and then it is also a T. We have been working with 274 schools in uh, Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation and recently on the 28th of February all of them came together and 2000 of them came together in this stadium in Navrangpura and this played 1100 working models. This was something that has been unheard of and largest in India. One of them, Aftab Ansari, made this beautiful toy and I call it a beautiful magic pen stand. So you can write with this and then he installed a Beyblade on top of it. I guess children know what that is and a magnet on top and then he put it in and this magic pen magically stands in the air and it starts to spin and spins for a while. This spins for about five minutes if you spin it right. These are all magnets in action. Once we do all of this, there is a reason why we need to have making in our classes. One, of course, it's the best way to engage. Best way to engage our teachers and our children. It is the best way to engage our children in doing something. While doing, the things don't remain in the intellect, they become part of us and they get a sense of accomplishment. But the most important thing is they learn how to deal with failure. All these two toys on the table, um, you know, they might look simple. The things that we have made might look simple, but it's only after 5, 10, 15 try, tries and days that you get them right. And we have to get those things done right in the beginning. We are preparing our future generation for the future we have no clue about. And curriculum, let me tell you, will not take it there. It are the, these are the grits of um, you know, passion, inspiration, and this perseverance will take us through. And that has to start in our classes by making. And with that, I come up to the next most important cog in this wheel of education, and that is our teachers. We did this uh, program uh, or a project in the state of Chhattisgarh. We call it the Million Makers Program. Million Makers of Chhattisgarh. And there, every single, we did this workshop in every single district of the Chhattisgarh. 26 districts of Chhattisgarh. And we asked this question to our teachers, how many of you have had love marriages? And um, well, not, not love marriage, but love marriage to your profession. And the answers were very few. I think we need to make sure that our teachers are inspired. The most important thing for a teacher to do is not to cover the curriculum, but uncover it. To make sure our teachers are, in, our children are inspired. We need to tell stories, stories which can inspire, which can bring out the context, which can tell us why we do what we do. The Enigma machine for those who have heard. Uh, we made it for about a thousand rupees and all it does it's a brilliant device of electrical engineering mechanical engineering and maths and cryptography all in one and this is the reason why first computers were invented the computer was invented to decode this machine and world war ended two years early and lives were saved so when we talk about computer science let's make sure we talk about the history on the context this is important how many of you have heard of this lady called Maryam Mir Kazani she was the first woman of first woman to ever get a Nobel Prize in math. It's also called the Fields Medal. Actually, you don't get a Nobel Prize. First woman of Iranian descent. And she was absolutely amazing. She got inspired. She got inspired by doing all of this by a story that her brother told her when she was in class 12. Before that, she was never doing. She passed away a few months back. She, you have to be under 40 to get a, a Fields Medal in math. And the only woman now, we need to make sure we tell stories of Maryam to our children so that many more Maryams come up. There's only one woman who's got Fields Medal. And I'm going to show you this next device, which is something that we made just now. Um, and it's called a chariot which spins. So you see, this is pointing, let's call it eastwards. And no matter which way I turn, it keeps pointing eastwards. 2000 years ago, a Chinese K 
king asked that I want a chariot which always points to my kingdom and that is how the differential gears were invented. This device that you see in the middle is actually a differential gear. If we didn't have that king asking for this, we wouldn't have our cars running smoothly. On the turn, any of the turns, our car will skid. We need to make sure that these stories come out in our classrooms. I want to make sure that I leave you with two most important things that we need to do in our classrooms to make sure that they are engaging. The first one is making needs to happen in our classrooms. Our children need to make, our teachers need to make, and our classrooms need to make. Only by making can make in India happen. And of course, we need inspiring teachers who can tell us inspiring stories about Mariam, about Arvind, about Ken, about so many people who have done so much interesting work to bring out the context and history alive for us. And in the end, I would ask <laughs> Neeraj, my colleague, to send me Bolt here. And Bolt is this walking machine that we made. And he's bringing us single cut TED. This is the simplest and the oldest walking machine. You can stop Bolt. <laughs> and Bolt has stopped. Um, simplest walking machine. It's something that robotics started with probably just a simple motor and two gears. And what Brol brought me is this piece of paper. And I have written TED on this piece of paper, but I folded it. And with a single cut in one direction, I'm going to get TED out of the paper, literally. And so this is TED out of the paper. This is. The interesting thing about doing this, it's a beautiful thing about math. Math is not just about numbers. There are few people who are working in our lab as interns and they have done this work. It's an amalgamation of math and art. Let not your teacher tell you that if you can do things faster. <laughs> Does it look like this or like that? Oh, it looks like that to me, so it must be like that. Thank you so much for having me here.